let's start off with a summary of what happened during this GOP town hall hosted by CNN's Anderson Cooper. Now, there were a few answers that stood out to me uh, and a few things that stood out to me quite a bit. Uh, they started off with Ted Cruz, and Ted Cruz was the master of dodging all questions. He'd be, he'd a be asked a question, and then he would give these insanely long-winded answers that would honestly confuse the very person in the audience who asked that question. Yeah. And they would pretty much forget what they asked. And uh, any time Anderson Cooper tried to get involved to kind of hold him accountable and get him to answer the question, he would basically snap at Anderson Cooper. Anderson Cooper would sit back and allow him to continue on with his long-winded, confusing answers. You know, uh, sometimes if you watch the, the Discovery Channel, you'll see these animals that the way, if they're, if they're prey, if a predator is attacking them, they jab it with an anesthetic and they stun the animal <laughs> until they can get away. I felt that that was Ted Cruz's debating style tonight. Yes. Yeah. That he just anesthetized you with these endless answers. It's like, I forget the question. I'm not even going to try to, you know, that Anderson Cooper just basically was stunned into submission. So that, yeah. Cruz could scurry was, away yeah, into it's, the bushes. It's like, it was like Ted Cruz was, it, when they asked, asked him a question in this forum, he was having, because no one's ever liked his personality in real <laughs> life, he decided to like try to invent one that people would like, and it was the storyteller who told all these earnest stories. All these earnest stories about his family members that made no sense and weren't <laughs> even remotely connected to the question that was asked to him. It, it was a less slick, more waxy-faced Martin O'Malley. That's exactly it right. I, it was very O'Malley-esque, but at least O'Malley shared anecdotes that were related to the questions that were asked Yeah, that's him. true, yeah. Yeah, yeah. he would answer the question. Doing, but, right, right. I, yep. I compare, yeah, the, I'm good. The, the first hour I found to be just incredibly boring. I, I thought that Kasich's hour was just going to be a snooze fest and completely irrelevant, and I was completely wrong. Uh, Cruz wanted to avoid the question as much as possible. He sounded like, like he doesn't sound, he doesn't come off nearly as stupid as Trump. Like he's as wrong as Trump in a yeah. lot of ways, but not as stupid. He knows more about the world and about uh, the economy, about the government and how it works to some extent. Um, but he was still talking as if he didn't have an answer, and he was hoping that if he went on long enough, they'll, they'll just have to move on to something else, which since it's Anderson Cooper, they would inevitably do. Mm -hmm. And then occasionally he would give sort of a straight answer. He'd reveal something that he would actually do, and you'd be reminded, oh wait, this guy's a fucking crazy person. We can never, ever allow him to be in power. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that Anderson Cooper started off this town hall kinda strong. He did ask Cruz difficult questions, but he was terrible when it came to the follow-ups, right? Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Cruz was asked about his statements regarding monitoring Muslim neighborhoods in the U.S., and uh, his answer was ridiculous, especially when he talked about Bloomberg's uh, monitoring of Muslims and how he felt it was successful. It was not successful. It did not yield any intel that helped us in our counterterrorism efforts. In fact, uh, we had NYPD officials working with the feds by infiltrating student groups, uh, student Muslim groups, college students, going on rafting trips with them. And again, we wasted our resources. It didn't yield any uh, intelligence that we needed. Uh, but. Nonetheless, I want to give you guys Cruz's answer, and then we'll talk about it a little more. In the wake of the horrible attacks yeah. uh, that we saw in Brussels, you proposed securing our borders, crushing ISIS, stopping refugees, but you also suggested that law enforcement, quote, patrol and secure Muslim neighborhoods before they become radicalized. The mm -hmm. commander who oversaw the, pro the very program that you claim was a success in New York testified under oath that it didn't lead to any investigations a in the six years. A Anderson, in New York, this was a successful program. That Have, was set in up what on way? It was set up under Mayor, Mayor Michael Bloomberg to monitor and to work cooperatively with the Muslim community to prevent radicalization and to stop radical Islamic Can terrorist you name plots one case before that it occurs. Like there, there, there are a number of cases that identified a bookstore that was a locus for radicalization and allowed law enforcement to go after that bookstore. And what happened was when Mayor Bill de Blasio got elected, he gave in to political correctness and shut the unit down. Listen, if you want to stop radical Islamic terrorism, the answer isn't to go hang out in random neighborhoods. It is instead to focus on communities where radicalization is a risk. So he keeps reiterating this. And by the way, the NYPD has come out against Cruz. Uh, there have been a number of politicians who have come out against Cruz. Uh, uh, Kasich even mentioned that he doesn't think this is the right policy. Mm -hmm. But look, we have laws in place already where once there's probable cause, we go in, we investigate, and we see whether or not someone poses a real threat, right? 
So what exactly is Cruz asking for? It's like he made a strong statement right after the Brussels attack, right? He fed into the fear mongering that we have in this country. And then as soon as he got a little criticism, he, I didn't mean that. I didn't mean that, but I did mean that. But I didn't mean that, but I did mean that. He's been around Donald Trump too much. He knows that the, now that the best thing to do when you're confronted with the fact that you didn't tell the truth is just to repeat the lie. And that's what I think he did there. He just said, yeah, no, it did work. And yeah. Anderson Cooper kept saying, well, it didn't work. Well, no, it did. There were a number of cases. Well, you know, it was Donald Some Trump. Books, I wish Anderson yeah. Cooper was a little more aggressive in stating the fact that it did not. By the way, Cruz's wording drove me crazy, right? We had uh, officials work with the Muslim community. No, they spied on innocent Muslims. I want to go after the bad guys. I want to go after the people who are radicalizing individuals, the people who are planning terrorist attacks in this country. I want that more than anything. But we are wasting our resources by just randomly going into Muslim neighborhoods and deeming everyone guilty simply because they're Muslims. It's just stupid. It doesn't make any sense. And the fact that he is being unclear or lying to the public about what he really means is frustrating. Yeah. I think, uh, I can't believe that uh, whoever was interested in this race and tuned into this tonight has got to be the biggest loser, right? Because who, this was horrible. I mean, this, this turned me off from well, politics, and I love politics, and I was like, oh, God, I watch anything but this. But I watched it anyway. I mean, it was, this was this is what people hate about politics. I think. I, I think the Kasich portion was perfectly fine. Like it's what Kasich, you would expect Kasich out was, of a town hall yeah, of this Kasich sort. Kasich was okay. Yeah. Kasich was okay. But it's just weird to watch Anderson Cooper sit there and you know on the day that Donald Trump's uh, campaign manager gets arrested for battery, he doesn't really seem to lay a glove on him. In fact, Donald Trump shows up with some homework for him to do. Hey, why don't you read this for me, boy? You know, and he did, yeah. and he took it, and he read it. It's like, I, what are you taking control of your own goddamn? I mean, that was weird. It's so, so right away, Donald Trump has got control of the interview. Read this, read that, huh? I you win. know what he could have said, Sorry. by the way. You know what Anderson <laughs> Cooper could have said? He could have said, "You are the first presidential candidate in American history whose campaign manager was arrested <laughs> for, for battery." Well, but yeah. just to be clear, charge, not case, arrested. A, a charge, charge. Excuse yeah. me. Uh, it was still first American candidate in history. Yeah. How do you feel making history in this particular way? Because my point being, <clears throat> Donald Trump has been allowed to get away with push, not only pushing the envelope, shredding the envelope yep. of decent political behavior, and nobody says anything other than, hmm. Yeah, right. right. You, you know, and that's there, what Anderson Cooper did. Well, okay. there, was, there was a guy in Wisconsin on AM radio who did an actual interview and pushed back on Donald Trump, and everybody's going crazy about it. The news, did you hear what happened? They sent news people out to interview the guy who interviewed yeah. Yeah. Donald Trump, and they're sitting there, and so if you really want to know where to go, go to get the good interviews, AM radio in Wisconsin apparently is showing yeah. everybody in corporate news how to do Freaking interview with Donald Trump. I know. Yeah. I mean, real journalism is such a rarity in this country that as soon as one person does it right, it becomes a news story in and of itself. It's yeah. kind of amazing. It, Go ahead. The, the, the part that was most, I mean, look, Cruz is always going to be slimy and disgusting and, and evasive and all that. Um, the, the Trump part was what frustrated, frustrated me the most uh, because Anderson Cooper clearly had no interest and like he would occasionally like start to come in with maybe a follow up. We'll never know because uh, Trump would just say, "Excuse me," and then Anderson Cooper just goes back to thinking about the next car he's going to buy because he's pay being paid so amazingly to sit there and just allow Trump to do whatever he wants as he waltz closer to, and closer to possibly getting the nomination. And and the it's difficult to prove that he doesn't know what NATO is. It's difficult to prove that his plans for the Middle East would be an absolute disaster. It's difficult. I understand that. The guy retweeted an insulting picture to say, my wife is hotter than your ugly wife of another candidate. And he couldn't even stick that to him. I have, There's never, ever going to so, be anything yeah, easier. But, but I have a different theory that's not quite as harsh on Anderson Cooper. Okay. And my theory is that it's pretty harsh on CNN. But my theory is that the network execs said to him, don't be too tough on Donald. We don't want him to say he's not coming back. So, Oh, I don't doubt that it's something like so that. I that don't like that. Anderson, oh, I don't either. But so that Anderson had to say, well, um, okay, I guess I can't follow up on that. Look, I get it. You I know. get it. I understand. And by the way, John, and could look, you read this out loud for me? <laughs> no, and look, I get it. But at the same time, 
Anderson Cooper gets to make choices in his career. That's true. Right? That's everyone fair everyone yeah. gets to decide where they work and where they don't work. Right. Especially so, him. Exactly. Because he doesn't need the paycheck. That's and look, fair. And look, the yeah. glitz, the glam, the money, it's, yeah. it's very, very tempting. But at the same time, you're doing a disservice to the American people. And that way of moderating this town hall is a disservice to the American people, right? Yeah. Where you allow Trump to bully you, to come into the beginning of his portion of this town hall with the police report uh, with Michelle Fields' account and tell you, yeah, read this, read this, read this. And, and just totally the way, hijack the entire event. Yeah. That's insane. That shows that you are an irresponsible so-called journalist. Do your job. No, there's and if, no if question. And if your yeah. organization doesn't allow you to do your job, then you have a decision to make. And if you decide to stay there, then you are agreeing, you are complying. And it is what it is. That's the world that we you know, live in. I, I think that's gotten... absolutely right. I, I just want to add, by the way, that let us not forget, let's be the sole witnesses, if we're going to be the sole witnesses, that Anderson Cooper was party to the maligning of a woman who is the alleged victim mm -hmm. in a battery yes. accusation. Yeah. Yes. So uh, it's not just, I totally, I agree 100% with everything you said, but I'm going to add into it the ethics or lack thereof that allows you to participate, stand there, help a guy slander a person wow. who's been yeah. allegedly victimized. Yes. That's so, outrageous. 